Hey guys, Brendan from TAT here. Um, today we've got a 2.7 litre diesel Ford Territory um, SZ model and we got burnt by the in-tank lift pump when doing a fuel filter change. So I want to try and show you what we're going to do to hopefully have it not happen again. Okay, so we got this territory here, went through a bunch of work doing the front and rear timing belts, you know, a big list of it. Last thing we wanted to do was the water and fuel um, light was on the dash, so we decided, okay, well, let's go and see if the fuel filter needs draining. We weren't doing a service, but we were gonna help the guy out. So we drain out the um, fuel filter, we then go to prime the system, and we've got ourselves a crank no start, awesome. So, um, went through, did some quick testing. We were able to find pretty quickly using an amp clamp that there was absolutely no current draw from the low pressure in-tank fuel lift pump um, and had to have that great conversation with the customer to say look we are going to need to put a pump in this thing to get it going. So there's a lot of articles about this of a lot of guys getting caught after doing a fuel filter having the same situation and to be honest I just really didn't subscribe to the fact that people are saying the pump is dying through the bleeding process or something like that you know it doesn't make sense at all. So from what I can see online there's two real symptoms that you're gonna get here. So you've got, either you're a mechanic and you've done a fuel filter and you go to prime it and you find that the lift pump doesn't work, we now know it's dead, or you may have some low fuel pressure codes, you may be towing and when you go to put real heavy load on the car, um, you may get a bit of surging or even going to limp if the fuel pressure drops enough. Now, what I believe is happening is, I think these lift pumps are dying and they're already dead. And so the customer's driving around, it doesn't need that lift pump running got a tracoidal pump in the back of the high pressure pump and while the system's still sealed that thing is able to suck up fuel just like your Toyota Hilux and that the system runs fine it pulls it through the pump when we drain the system the fuel runs back we go to prime it and there's nothing there to get the thing primed and that's where we run into trouble so um, what I'm going to be doing is getting the guys whenever we're doing a fuel filter on these it's quite easy to cycle the ignition and you can hear the pump run under the car yeah, get down at the passenger side rear wheel and, and you can hear and feel the tank. But I'm going to get them to make sure the pump is working before we touch anything on the fuel system on these now. And hopefully that's going to mean that we can then tell the customer, I'm happy to do your fuel filter, but by the way, you're going to need a pump if we do, rather than the other way around when um, the, the blame finger is going to get pointed at us. Um, if you do get to the point where um, you do have one that, that doesn't want to start after you've, you've done a fuel filter or anything like that, I'll show you the, the few quick checks that you can do to confirm the pump has failed. So first thing you're going to do is we're going to come to the fuel filter. And this guy in the middle, that's your outlet, so that goes to the high pressure pump. So when we pull this middle one off and you cycle, cycle the ignition on, um, the in-tank pump should run, we should get fuel coming spurting out of here. Okay, so if we get nothing coming out of here, the in-tank pump is not running. Come across to the fuse box. And so this 30 amp fuse here is the fuel pump fuse. And then this relay to the left here, this is your fuel pump relay. So what I did was, as I would with any fuel pump, come over to my diag drawer and we've got these um, fuse buddies. So I can take out the fuse, put that in there. We can then put the amp clamp around there and I could see I had absolutely no amperage and nothing was going on there. Just to be 100% sure that everything was working, I then grab out my relay test kit. So you can take a relay out, that allows us to put it in, put the relay in situ, and I can see from the pins here I had out, output, and that goes to the fuel pump. So I know that I've got a fuel pump that is getting power. No, I did not check the ground, um, that would have been a difficult process, but confident enough to say that um, we had a dead fuel pump pulling no current. So um, those are the quick, easy tests you can do to confirm that you've got a problem. So a quick little experiment. This is your fuel tank, this is your fuel pump, fuel outlet. So this is coming from the fuel pump. This is your fuel line and your high pressure pump with the track oil pump in it, we're, we're pretending. Right, so while the car's running, it's able to suck quite easily through that fuel pump and it's enough to keep the car going. Um, but then once you stop, you pull your fuel filter off, the system drains back. Um, you don't have your lift pump to, to bleed the thing 
doesn't go. Now we did try this after the fuel filter to suck up past the fuel filter. We even had it right up at the entry to the high pressure fuel pump um, but could not get it to go. You could maybe try the, the bulb style um, pumps at that point but really I mean the customer needs a lift pump. That would be a disservice to them really even if you got the thing bled probably going to set some codes eventually when they try and overtake a semi on the highway so um, either way you've got to tell them that it needs a, a low pressure pump inside the fuel tank. A quick bit of bonus footage here so we've got a six wire fuel pump right so two wires for the fuel pump one wire for this curious switch and I'm um, sorry two wires for the switch and two wires for the, your regular sender unit so this switch some guys would have come up against when the fuel level gets too low in these they will shut the fuel pump down there's a procedure you have to go through obviously putting some fuel in and then a procedure to get the fuel pump to run again um, so having a look at the switch itself while we got one apart so this is your switch here this is your float right now connected in we've got continuity and then you'll see as I bring her up gets to about there and it starts to read open circuit up on these wires so there'll be a magnet for sure that's the only way I can theorize it inside this because there's, there's no physical connection or anything there but there'll be a magnet that's able to change this and that's how it knows it wants to stay like that but if you drop your tank down to here then it's going to shut down or it's going to send a, a message to the ECU via the fact that this now has continuity and it's going to shut down that fuel pump so it's interesting while we got it apart so a simple enough process to implement guys listening to see if that um, in-tank pumps running before you do anything on these vehicles um, I'd love to know your thoughts if you um, think that there's a, a different reason for this a different theory I'm all ears this is only me spitballing um, I believe that the pumps are driving around and already dead um, but leave your comments down below if you've um, been burned by it or if you've got any ideas of what we can do to prevent it because yeah, no one wants to make that phone call and get the, the finger of blame pointed at them. Thanks.